Hello everyone, my name is Goma Signolo. Welcome to another video by Attention Matrix, where we try to make learning fun and easy. Please comment, like and subscribe if you would like us to continue making this content and you enjoy it or find it helpful. Now on to the next video. Let's get right into it. Okay, hello. Um, in this video we will be looking at an exam question. Uh, we will be looking at an exam question on how to approach a momentum and impulse question. Okay, we'll be looking on how we'll be looking at how to approach a momentum and impulse question uh, through this question. Uh, we'll be using it as an example, and uh, hopefully, uh, it gets to uh, this video gets to solidify the principles behind momentum and impulse. Okay, before we move on to the next topic. So the question is as follows. It's question four from a September paper, 2022, paper one. It says, a girl on roller skates of combined mass 52 kilograms moves horizontally at a certain constant velocity. Okay, she catches a brick of mass five kilograms, which is thrown vertically downwards from the top of a high wall. The girl continues to move in a straight line at a speed of two 0.4 meters per second after catching the brick. Ignore the effects of friction. Okay, so we're told to ignore the effects of friction and that's the situation that we have there. So just before I get to asking, I mean to uh, solving the problem, uh, let's just establish what's going on. Okay, so it's important to establish what's going on before answering a question to understand what's actually happening. So you've got a girl, right? You've got a girl on roller skates Okay, this is a girl on roller skates and she is on roller skates and this girl has a combined mass of 52 kilograms and this girl is skating towards that direction and someone from a higher wall there drops a brick vertically downwards and as the girl, uh, as the girl uh, approaches the brick and gets to the bridge she catches the brick right the girl catches the brick while she is skating she catches the brick while she is skating and she continues uh, to skate with the brick now in her hands okay with the brick in her hands okay that's what happens that's basically what happens in this question now what are they asking us well firstly they told us to ignore the effects of friction they told us to ignore the effects of friction. What does ignoring the effects of friction tell us? Well, it tells us that remember with momentum, right? With momentum, you can have a momentum in, in, an, in an isolated system or you can have momentum in an unisolated system or an open system, okay? Remember, you can have isolated system. If you don't want to call it isolated, you can call it closed system. And you have an unisolated system or non-isolated system if you want to you can call it an open system now for an isolated system you don't have any net external force acting on the body that you're looking at and in an open system you have a, a net external force acting on the on the on the system okay so the net external force will affect the velocity of the system Okay, and in an isolated uh, um, system, you don't have a net force affecting the velocity of a, of a system. Okay, so in this case, we have been told, we've actually been told twice that this is a closed system. Firstly, we were told a girl on roller skates of a combined mass of 52 kilograms moves horizontally at a certain constant velocity. The keyword there is constant. Okay, so they're saying she was moving at a constant velocity and... By what, what does constant velocity mean? Constant velocity means that there is no acceleration. And if you don't have acceleration, then you don't have a net force. If your velocity is constant, it means your acceleration is zero. Remember that. Always remember that. If your velocity is constant, if your velocity is not changing, then your acceleration is zero. You don't have acceleration, right? So if you don't have acceleration, then you don't have a net external force, meaning your system is closed. Okay, so they basically told us twice that the system is closed. They told us by saying, ignore the effects of friction, and they told us by telling us that the velocity is constant. Okay, so that's what uh, that's that's just me interpreting the question. What is the first question that they asked? Let's see, 4.1. They say, write down the horizontal speed of the brick 
just before the girl catches it. The horizontal speed of the brick. Oh, by the way, the brick weighs five kilograms. We missed that piece of information in our little interpretation there. Okay, so the brick weighs five kilograms. So that brick there weighs five kilograms. Okay. So um, now what they're asking you in 4.1, they are saying 4.1 is asking you what is the speed right not just the speed write down the horizontal speed of the brick just before the girl catches it so the brick is thrown from a high wall downwards vertically downwards right so it's thrown it has a certain speed from the point that is thrown to the point just before it reaches the girl vertically but what they're asking us here is to write down the horizontal speed, the horizontal speed, right? The horizontal speed. So the brick is not moving to the right or to the left. The brick is moving vertically downwards, meaning that it does not have a horizontal speed. And, and, and you know, the mark allocation there will give you a hint that there are no calculations required. This is basically just a logic question. The answer is in the question, okay? So basically there is no horizontal speed. So the horizontal speed is... So the horizontal speed, I'm just going to call it VH, you can call it whatever, is 0 meters per second. There is no horizontal speed. Okay, so that's a free mark, basically. That's, that's a free mark there. Okay, so 4.2. Let's look at 4.2. 4.2 says, calculate the girl's speed just before she catches the brick. Okay, so just before she catches the brick, let's look at our situation there. Just before the girl catches the brick, she is that system there, right? She's skating on her own and she has her own mass of 52 kilograms. Then she catches the brick, right? She catches the brick, then it becomes that system there. And what happens after she catches the brick? Well, if we go back to the question, um, we are saying the girl continues to move in a straight line at a speed of 2.4 meters per second after catching the brick so she's continuing to move in a straight line at a velocity of two meters per second okay after catching the brick okay so here she has a certain initial velocity initial velocity of girl right i'm going to call it initial velocity of girl um uh, before catch before catching the brick and after she catches the brick, she has a certain velocity together with the brick. So in this case, this is a momentum question. Okay. Remember with momentum, we are dealing with collisions, right? With momentum, we're usually dealing with collisions. If you have an object here and you have another object there, if this object is moving and crashes into that object, even if the objects stick together and they continue to move after crashing, then this is your typical momentum uh, problem right this is your typical momentum scenario so in this case what are the objects well first object is the girl first object is the girl the second object is the brick now if you look at this right this is a girl if you look at this what is happening is that you've got your first object this i'm just going to draw it uh, as a circle the first object is the girl and the object is moving that way what is the second object the second object is the brick i'm just going to draw it in the form of a brick but the brick has a velocity of zero in that direction. So this is basically that scenario that we have here. We've got an object colliding with an object that is stationary. In other words, the brick is stationary in the horizontal direction. I understand that the brick got thrown from a vertical direction, but momentum, we look at momentum in one direction, in a linear direction, and the direction that you're considering here is the horizontal direction. Why? Because we are having movement in the horizontal direction, not in the vertical direction. Okay, so this is basically the scenario just, you know, made a bit, they're trying to complicate you, uh, to, to, to confuse you, sorry. Okay, right, so what happens there, this girl with her, with her uh, roller skates, rolling that way she catches the brick and this girl has an initial velocity velocity initial of the girl is what i'm going to call it this brick has a an initial velocity vib i'm going to call it that but this initial velocity is zero okay and the mass of this girl you can see that now how this is turning into a conservation of momentum problem the the the, the mass of this girl is 52 kilograms see how easy it's becoming now because we're getting all our, our data now the mass of the brick is five kilograms. OK, 
okay law of conservation of momentum this is before collision before the girl catches the brick that counts as a collision remember what a, a collision is it's when one object impacts another comes into impact with another uh, object in this case the object or the body you can call it a body is the girl coming into impact with the brick okay this is before collision what happens after collision after collision you've got the girl you've got the girl with the brick okay still continuing to skate uh, in that direction but now you've got a combined mass okay you've got a, remember you've got the, you've got the uh, uh, v f the velocity of this whole system now is 2 comma 4 um i'm just going to just to avoid confusing you i'm just going to do something first remember the the final the vf final velocity final of the girl is the same as the final velocity of the brick which is i'm just going to call vf okay and then that has been given to us it is 2,4 meters per second okay it's been given to us in the question because the girl catches the brick and they move together um, at a velocity of 2,4 meters per second and their combined mass we know that the girl weighs 52 kilograms with all her roller skates on and the brick weighs 5 kilograms okay and this is a closed system since this is a closed system we know that we can use the law of conservation of momentum it's that easy right so what is the law of conservation of momentum this is a, a system two after the collision okay so what is the this is a, a, a um, scenario two after the collision what is the law of conservation of momentum the total momentum let's say the total total p before collision right total p, uh, p before collision is equal to total p after collision where p is momentum right where p is momentum basically Okay, we know that momentum is given by p so we just have to uh, write down the equation and substitute it's that easy right so we know that the total uh, momentum before is we know that momentum is given by mass times velocity right so we want the momentum for all the objects in the system what are the objects in the system well we know that the we've got the momentum of the girl right plus the momentum of the brick this is before this is before momentum of the brick before k all of this will be i'm just gonna do this before right before is equal to the momentum of the girl plus the momentum of the brick after after okay so now we just uh we just substitute we know that p is equal to mv so i need a i need an mv for all of these i need an mv for all of these p's here i need an mv okay so for the girl for the girl my uh mass of the girl times the velocity initial velocity of the girl that's the momentum of the girl right before collision before before i'm just gonna say before right it looks like a 64 it's gonna confuse you let's just say before collision right before collision and the brick we've got the mass of the brick times the velocity initial of the brick before collision Okay, I'm taking it very slowly, very slowly, just so you understand what's happening here. Okay, this is before collision, right? And what is after collision? After collision, we've got the both of them combined. The girl has the brake now, and still her roller skates are on. Now, what do we have? Well, this is the brake and the girl are now acting together. They are moving together, so we've got the mass of the brake and the girl mass of the brick and the girl right times this is still m this is just the mass the total mass the mass of the brick and the girl times the final velocity that they're moving together 
uh, at K. So this is the total momentum after collision, after the two objects or the two bodies or the girl and the brick have come into contact. Okay, now we just have to equate these two scenarios. Come on, I have to equate this scenario here and that scenario there. They are the same scenario. These two scenarios are the same. You can treat them the same. So what I have, let's go to scenario number one. I've got this, right, plus that. So mg times vig, m, mass of the girl, times initial velocity of the girl, right, plus what? Let's go back up there and see. Plus mb vib, mass of the brick times initial velocity of the brick. mb, mass of the brick times vib, initial velocity of the brick. All of this is equal to what? Remember, after collision, they are acting together, mb plus g. So the mass of the brick and the girl combined times what? Times the final velocity. Okay. And then you can just substitute. Easy peasy. You can just substitute. You have all these numbers. What is mg? The mass of the girl, remember, is 52. Okay. Let me just do this before I actually substitute. Right, hit right next to them. The mass of the girl is 52. Okay, the velocity of the girl before is unknown. This is what you're asked to find, the velocity of the girl just before catching the brick. What is the mass of the brick? It's five kilograms. What is the velocity of the brick before? It's zero. Remember, it's zero. The horizontal velocity is zero. And that is why they asked you that question uh, in the beginning. Okay, now what is the mass of the uh, brick and the girl combined? Well, that's going to be 52 plus five. And the total velocity, that's going to be two comma Four. Okay, so we've got all of all of that information. Now you just substitute. Okay, so let us actually go on ahead and substitute. So you've got we've got fifty two v i. I'm just substituting now v i girl plus zero. Why is this zero? Because five times zero is zero. Anything multiplied by zero is zero. Then you've got the mass of the brick and the girl combined time uh, times 2.4 or oh, I'm just gonna write down the actual numbers substitute the actual numbers so that's gonna be 52 plus 5 this is uh, gonna be 57 57 times 2 comma 4 okay and then that's what you have uh, so after that you can solve you see the only unknown now is vig so you can solve for vig so the v initial velocity of the girl is equal to 57 times 2 comma 4 divided by 52 okay then the vig what is that answer there 57 times 2 comma 4 got my calculator open yeah 50 what is it 50 let's go back again 57 times 2 comma 4 57 times 2 comma 4 divided by divided by what divided by 52 divided by 52 that's 2 comma 6 3 okay that's 2 comma 6 3 meters per second to the right done problem solved now we know that uh, the initial velocity before the girl caught the brick the girl was moving at a speed of 2.63 uh, uh, meters per second so the girl actually slowed down because she was moving at a pace of a, at a velocity of 2.63 meters per second she caught the brick and then she moved at a pace of or at a velocity of 2.4 with the brick so after catching the brick she slowed down which actually makes sense because she's heavier. All right, so that's that's easy. That's that's it. That's so far. That's the law of conservation of momentum in action. That should be easy enough. Okay. So now, what does the next part of the question say? Okay. So we get a further instruction. It says the girl brick combination. The girl brick combination moving at two point four meters per second moves onto a rough surface. She comes to rest after moving two meters along the rough surface. 
what are we being told here? Okay, let's interpret that question. So we've got the girl. Now this is after the girl has caught the has caught the uh, the brick, right? The girl has caught the brick. Now she's moving in the, at, in the at, towards that direction with a velocity of two comma four meters per second, right? Two comma four meters per second. <laughs> then she gets onto a rough surface. This rough surface, she as soon as she gets onto that rough surface, so here's the girl there, right? She gets onto a rough surface, skates onto a rough surface, still carrying the brick. And then after, as soon as she started getting onto the rough surface, she comes to a stop after two meters. After getting onto that rough surface, she comes to a stop after two meters. So before she got into that rough surface, she was moving at a constant velocity of that. After she got onto the rough surface, she moves for two meters, for about two meters, and then she comes to a complete stop because the, the surface is so rough. Uh, she comes to a complete stop with the brick still in her hand. So because she comes to a stop, what we've been told that uh, here is that her final velocity then is zero because she's not moving anymore. Right. So before she got onto the surface, her initial velocity was two comma four meters per second. After move after after moving two meters, she gets uh, to a velocity of zero because she stops moving. And why does she stop moving? As soon as they say rough surface, what force comes into play? We've got friction. As soon as they say rough, they mention anything about rough surface, then we've got friction acting on this girl. I don't know if I'm answering a question before they actually asked it, but anyways, you've got friction. As soon as they say rough, you've got a frictional force acting on, on, on this girl. Okay, so what is friction? Friction is any force that opposes movement uh, caused by a surface, right, between the moving object and the ground or on the surface, right? So it's, it's always opposing movement. So let's see. What happens here? Say so they say 4.3, write down a pair of action reaction forces acting while the girl catches the brick. Okay. So this question is okay. So the action reaction. So what 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 force have so as the girl catches the brick, what force acts on the girl? Well, the force that acts on the hand of the girl is 4.3. Let's it's not 4.3. 4.3 is the question that you're answering. 4.3 so as the girl catches the brick right as the girl catches the brick brick is falling down like that catches the brick what forces are acting well the brick is applying its weight on the hand of the girl but the reaction to that because the brick doesn't go all the way right it gets it 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 it, it lands on the girl's hands and it doesn't continue going further down. What's keeping it from going further down? Well, it's the hands of the girl on the brick. Okay, so you basically have that situation going on. You've got that situation and that situation where this is the force of the girl on the brick and this is the force of the brick on the girl. You can call this F B for F brick and you can call this F G for F girl on the brick or F G B and F B G, right? force of girl on brick and first force of brick on girl that's the it's a pair of forces and it's action reaction what does action reaction mean it means that the force are equal in magnitude and acting in opposite directions okay so that's basically what that question is it's an easy question that's another free mark there it's two marks one mark for each force i suppose okay and then 4.4, what does 4.4 say? Calculate the magnitude of the net force exerted by the rough surface to bring the girl brick combination to a stop after two meters. The net force. What is that net force? That is what I mentioned there. The net force is the friction. Remember I said, as soon as you have a rough surface, then you've got an externally applied force on your system or on your object. So the system is no longer an isolated system. It is now an open system. Remember earlier on I mentioned, and I mentioned in other videos as well, that you can have two kinds of systems, an isolated system and an unisolated system or an open system, right? The first part of the question was dealing with an isolated system. Now, since friction got involved, we are suddenly dealing with an open system or a non-isolated system. Let's deal with that and see uh, what sort of numbers we get. Okay. 
So now what do they ask us again? They asked us to calculate the magnitude of the net force. Calculate the magnitude of the net force exerted by the rough surface to bring the girl break combination to a stop after two meters. After two meters. So the girl comes to a stop after two meters. The girl traveled an entire two meters before coming to a stop. Now, before the girl came to a stop, she was traveling initial, her initial velocity was 2,4 uh, meters per second. Her final velocity was zero meters per second. And then in between here, as she was slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, her velocity slowly dropped. Okay, her velocity slowly dropped. So what is happening here? What, how do we know which principle to use? Well, remember with momentum and impulse, what I said, right? Impulse has a net force, an external force that is applied and you multiply it by time and that is equal to a change in momentum. Now, we are going to apply this principle here, the principle of momentum. Why? How do I know that uh, I can apply this? Well, firstly, do I have a net external force? Well, I do. That's what we've been asked to find. It's my friction. That's what I've been asked to calculate. Cool. Do I have a change in momentum? What is a change in momentum? Remember when your velocity changes and your mass stays the same, or even when your mass changes, your momentum changes. Do we have a changing velocity here or a changing mass? Yes, we do. We have a changing velocity because we have an initial velocity of 2,4 meters per second and we have a final velocity of 0 meters per second. So we have a change in velocity. Therefore, we have a change in momentum. Do we have a time? Well, we don't have a time. So how do we deal with this, with this thing? Because you can't have two unknowns. We can't have two unknowns and one equation. So we need another equation so that we can solve for, 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 for these two things. What is the time? What time are they talking about here? If you, uh, if, you have a, if you visit one of my previous videos, I mentioned in the video that impulse, right? If you're looking at a net force, if you're looking at a net external applied force on an object, that force, you only look at that force for the amount of time that it is being applied on the object that you're looking at. As soon as you stop applying the force, then you stop counting down the time or you stop counting the time, right? You stop your time. So this force only has to be applied for a specific amount of time that the force is in contact with your object. If you're pushing something, you're, you're applying an external force. Now, you're, you're, that thing has an impulse, and that impulse, it only has an impulse as long as you keep pushing it, as long as that external force is still being applied on the object that you're pushing. But as soon as you move your hand away from the object, then it doesn't have impulse anymore. Okay, it doesn't have impulse anymore. Now, in this case, what is applying a force on the object? You've got the ground. The ground is rough, so it's applying a force through friction on the roller skates of the girl. Now, as soon as the girl stops moving, remember what friction is. Friction is a force that opposes motion. Now, as soon as the girl stops moving, then there is no motion anymore. Now, if there is no motion anymore, then there is no force required to oppose motion because there is no motion. Therefore, there is no friction, right? And since there is no friction, then there is no impulse as soon as the girl stops moving because there is no net external applied force anymore. Okay, I'm going to repeat myself. The girl is moving with an initial velocity, starts slowing down. When she starts slowing down, she starts slowing down because of a force that is opposing her motion. That force that is opposing that motion is friction. Friction is an external applied force that opposes your motion. As soon as the girl comes to a stop after two meters, then you don't have motion anymore. Therefore, you don't have friction anymore because you don't have motion anymore. So you, you don't need a force to oppose a motion that is not there, right? So before the girl comes to a stop, you've got that force. After the girl comes to a stop, you stop applying that force. Now, why am I telling you this? Why is this important, very important to understand? Well, remember I said impulse is a factor, is a function of the net applied force for a period of time that the applied force is being applied on the object you're looking at. So if the force stops being applied on the object, then you stop counting down the time. Now, the main thing that I want us to find here then in that case is how long, how long did that friction act on the girl while she was on her roller skates? How long did it act while the girl was still moving 
before the rough surface stopped her from moving. How do you calculate that? Well, hopefully you remember this equation from earlier grades. We all know that the average velocity, okay, the average velocity is equal to the displacement or the distance traveled by whatever it is that you're looking at divided by the time traveled by that object. Okay, this is the average velocity. Now, how do we find the average velocity? We find it the way we find the average of anything. The average of anything is anything uh, divided by, if you have two things, the average of two things is those two things divided by, by two, right? So it's the number of your objects divided by, it's the sum of, the, of your objects divided by the number of your objects. In this case, the object is the velocity. So what is the average velocity? The average velocity is the number of velocities that you've been given. How many velocities have you been given uh, during the interaction of this girl with the rough surface? You've been given this velocity and that velocity. So that's two velocities. So that's the number of velocities. I mean, that's the sum of your velocities divided by the number of your velocities. You've been given your initial velocity, right? Plus your final velocity divided by two. That's your average velocity, okay? Divided by, I mean, sorry, is equal to, what is delta x? Delta x is the distance traveled by the girl. Distance traveled by the girl is two meters. So that's two meters. Then divided by delta t. Delta t is what we are looking for. Now delta t is the only is going to be the only unknown in this equation because what is vi? Initial velocity is two comma four. The girl had a velo the girl combined with the brick had a velocity of two comma four meters per second, and plus zero. Okay, let me just make space. Let me not write down the units while I'm substituting. 2.4 plus 0, that's the final velocity because the girl came to a stop, divided by 2, okay, is equal to 2 over delta t. This delta t is the amount of time that the friction was acting on the girl while she was skating. So, delta t, if you make delta t the subject of the formula, what you will have here is 2 times 2 divided by 2 comma 4. If you make... Uh, Delta T, the subject of the formula, so that's going to be 4 divided by 2 comma 4. That's going to be 1 comma something. 4 divided by 2 comma 4. 2 comma 4. It's 1 comma 6, 7. Okay, so 1 comma 6, 7 seconds. Why is this important? This 1 comma 6, 7 seconds tells us that from the moment that the girl started making contact with the rough surface to the moment that she stopped, she spent 1,67 seconds from that point to that point. So the friction acted, the friction acted on the girl for 1,67 seconds. So the girl had impulse for 1,67 seconds. She had impulse for 1,67 seconds because the force, the friction acted on the girl to stop the girl from moving for 1,67 seconds. And that's why this is very important there. Now, this is not what we were asked to look for, to solve for. What we were asked to solve for was the F net. Remember, F net, in this case, we know that the F net is the friction. F net times delta T is equal to change in momentum. Okay, do we have our change in momentum? Of course we do. We have our change in momentum. Remember our change in momentum. If, I'm, if I can expand this, we've got F net delta T is equal to the mass, the combined mass of the girl and the boy is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Okay, final velocity minus the initial velocity. What is our F net? Our F net is our friction. You can write F net, you can write friction. Doesn't matter, okay? I'm just going to write F net. Friction takes up too much space. So you've got F net there times what? 1,67 seconds. That's what we just found right now is equal to what is the total mass of the girl and the boy? I'm just going to write it down here. The total mass of the girl and the boy is all of this is equal to. All of this is equal to the mass of the girl and the boy. Girl weighs 52, not the boy, the brick, brick, and the brick weighs 5, 
what is the final velocity the final velocity well the girl stopped right and what is our initial velocity minus and then that minus is from the equation that's 2 comma 4 and then you solve for your f net easy as that you solve for your f net f net from this equation then is going to be equal to 57 it's going to be minus 57 times 2 comma 4 divided because it's minus because of that minus i just took it to the other side uh, divided by what divided by 1,67 divided by 1,67 then the answer that you are gonna get this is 57 57 times 2,4 am I right 57 times 2,4 divided by this is equal to divided by 1,67 this is 82 basically it's 82 newtons right i'm just going to call it 82 so it's f net is equal to minus because of that minus there 82 newtons then this is your net force what is this net force this is the friction acting on the girl that caused the girl to stop right now this minus here should make you feel happy it should make you feel comfortable because it's opposing motion so that's why it's in the negative direction right it shows you that it's opposing motion and it shows that uh, that's what we showed uh, there in our sketch when we were still interpreting the uh, the problem okay i drew it in the opposite direction to the motion so that uh, so then i get a bit of comfort uh, seeing a negative there shows that my mathematics at least was not wrong or at least I'm getting an, a sensible answer. All right. Okay. And that is your net force. And that's basically how you deal with impulse. And this is a typical exam question where you have to interpret a lot of things, think very carefully about these things, approach them carefully, you know, read the instructions, understand the question, and just get your 12 marks. Those are, those should be 12 free marks for you. Okay. It's a very easy, very simple question. Okay. I will see you in the next video. Uh, or another concept. Till next time.